Hello everyone, Ange de Lumière this morning for our um, High Vibe Monday episode on business spirit guides. I'm incredibly excited about this episode but also super nervous and you might understand why as I go along. Now, um, the reason why I'm nervous actually is because I'm about to talk about something that I don't usually talk about, it's my own business guides. And um, yeah, it's like a big come out. In uh, August last summer, um, August 2018 now, sorry, we're in 2019, I um, came out as um, a psychic out of the closet and I thought that I would get hate mail. I thought that I would um, be incensed, especially because I work in business. That was a very, very scary thing for me to do, to be so openly um, talking about um, what I do I mean, I don't do only that. I'm not only a psychic. I have so many aspects to me. I'm an artist. Uh, I'm a mother. I'm a, a wife. I'm an author. <laughs> uh, we are so much more than just one label. Le sorry, label. And I'm also French, so sometimes I mispronounce words. So here you go. But I think the word psychic for me is incredibly tr triggering. And that's why I resisted calling myself a psychic for so long. Um, it comes from um, lots of prejudice from people around me. I mean, none of my family members uh, get me. Um, they kind of suffer me in the suffer the psychic in me because they love me. But really, sometimes I think they wish I wasn't. Um, a lot of times, people believe that if you're psychic, you're like um, you can see them naked, and that's not the truth for me. I'm I'm not an intrusive psychic. I don't tune into people unless they ask me so I want you to understand that much about me is that I will never come up with you and give you a message without me being requested to do so so this is uh, and I, I really respect people's uh, privacy and boundaries and besides it would be far too too exhausting for me to do that I have um, quite a lot of things going on in my life so um, I don't usually go about and go and give people messages and it's also one of the reasons why as well I don't do um, psychic readings live like other psychics do because for me it's always an intimate thing <clears throat> sorry I, I i i work better when it's a one-to-one -one, um, um format uh, and i've considered this as a sacred connection my psychic connection so i don't want to do it like publicly like i'm some sort of show woman um and, and do those public lives so this is this is not doesn't mean that i'm judging other people who do it um, I think the people who do it are, are very good, but it's just not my, my jam. So let's start about business spirit guides, um, because I think that's a really fascinating subject and I hope you find, you'll find it as interesting as I do. Um, I actually have what I call the spirit, my spirit boardroom, okay, with all the, uh, the business guides that I have. But before we start talking about my boardroom, which brings a huge smile on my face, um, I want to talk about what are spirit guides, okay? Because some people have questions about it. Usually the first question that people have is, what is the difference between guides and angels? So spirit guides are people who have walked the earth and acquired enough wisdom to be able to become guides for those of us who are still walking the earth, okay? And they probably have one zone of genius. So a spirit guide could be, um, a very famous author that has um, they still have an interest in a book being written um, and um, they will work with someone who's writing a book in the same genre as they did or there's some, some sort of connection they find an interest in you because you're doing something that interests them because they're still interested in the same things that they were when they walked this earth Feel free to ask your questions in the chat box. However, because this is going to be a recording for my podcast, I will answer them at the end of this um, this um, recording. So angels are different because um, for the vast majority of angels, they have never walked the earth. So they don't have the understanding of it, what it's like to be human. They don't know what it's like to feel hungry. They don't know what it's like to need money to pay the bills. 
Um, and that's why I actually love business guides because they're so grounded, they're so practical. They have been there. And for a lot of them, they have been the starving artist or, or the person who started a business in the garage and had just like a, a tiny budget to make things work. And, and they know about, you know, what it's like to be human and f the feeling of fear and all that. Angels have no idea about that. They love everyone and they're very high vibe, but they don't, they don't know what it's like to be human. So when you have a guide in your team, it adds some clout. It adds some practicality to what you do. I remember um, I'm um, a reformed lawyer, a lawyer by, by training, and I had a 15 year career as a lawyer. So for me, being practical is super important. Uh, what's the difference as well between departed loved ones and guides? Because sometimes people think that their grandma is a guide of them and maybe she is still around. My grandmother is actually um, around a lot and I know that because the very first reading I had after her death, she just literally took over the reading and um, <laughs> took center stage. And that's how she was when she was alive. She had to have the center of attention, my grandmother. She was like that. But um, departed loved ones don't usually have as high a vibe as spirit guides because um, just because you um, go back to the creator and you go to the spirit world doesn't mean that you'll necessarily become this uh, enlightened person, that you will have all the wisdom in the world. We are still, when we... Um, when we die, I say die, but I don't really believe in death, but when we become um, spirit, uh, we still keep to a certain extent our personality. So um, this is important to understand because when you work with guides, you don't want to have a low vibe guides. And this is something I'm going to expand on a little bit further um, in this episode. So they're not necessarily uh, wiser. And that, I, don't, I don't know if you've seen this, if you've ever been to a platform uh, mediumship um, demo, I have been to a few because I actually trained as a spiritual healer. And that's the first thing I trained in when I started to branch out into uh, the wonderful art of um, the wonderful psychic arts. And you will see a medium on stage and they pass on messages. But very often, you know, um, if um, Aunt Audrey had a really brash sense of humor, it will still come across through the medium. Um, so you have to understand that, yeah, that, that these people love us, but they might not have, our, first of all, our best interest at heart. They still have very strong opinions. Whereas I believe that high vibe guides, and that's what I'm going to talk to um, about in a, in a while, or in, during this episode, obviously, um, are, have a much higher wisdom to offer. So if you have been given a message uh, from Aunt Audrey through a medium, just take it with a pinch of salt because even though she sees more than you do because she has a, a, a broader point of view, she might not be wise enough uh, for you to follow her advice, if that makes any sense. So yeah, a pinch of salt about that. But with guides, especially the high vibe guides, their guidance is always for your highest good. They don't have an emotional attachment to what you're doing. They don't have any judgment about what you're doing. So what's their purpose? The purpose of a guide is to impart their wisdom to you and to help you with something that you're doing that would have been a, a, something that they're interested in and highly qualified when they were on this earth. And they want to show you a bigger perspective. They want to, because the, the thing is when we uh, incarnate, um, we take blinders on, okay? In the spirit world, we have a very open mind, but when we start, um, when we become human, when we are, are squished into these tiny bodies that we grow into and then grow into adults, there's still a small body for the magnitude and the size of our soul is just mind blowing. So well, as soon as we incarnate, we take on blinders and we do that on purpose. So we, uh, the first blinder is our gender, the second blender is our race, and then our culture comes to it, then the beliefs of our parents. So we narrow down, it's like we come from a funnel from very wide to very, very narrow. And this narrowing is important because we are here to um, uh, experiment life from a, a, a very narrow perspective. Sometimes this is done on purpose so that we can find our way back 
to a more open mind. But other times it's because we're supposed to experience, we've chosen this experience um, for the benefits that it brings us. And uh, the benefits are sometimes um, elude us, but it's still for our benefit, for our growth. Because the purpose of being on earth is to grow, to grow as a soul, to grow in compassion, to grow in kindness, to grow in knowledge. And knowledge is not acquired through mere understanding, it is acquired through experience. Um, nobody understands how, what it's like to, for example, be abused as a child unless they actually went through it. And even if they did, it would only be their experience that they understand, not necessarily other people's experience. Does that make any sense? So this is the bit that the, the backdrop of what guides are. And if you have any questions, as I said, feel free to ask them. Now, a guide needs to have a certain level of wisdom to be um, helpful to you. But I want to say this here, even Donald Trump has guides, okay? So <laughs> I'm sorry to put it this way, but there's also all different sorts of levels of vibes for guides. Some guides have really um, screwy um, priorities and some guides have the highest good of everyone in mind, including yours. So you want to be careful who you associate yourself with because on some level, the guides will match your vibe. So one of the very first jobs you want to do when you start working with guides is to raise your vibe, which is something that I will be talking about in another episode. So I think I actually have done an episode on how to raise your vibe. So um, go back on to the past episodes, but um, this is something I'm going to be doing in a, in a webinar soon. So um, you want to be as, as high vibe as possible, so you attract high vibe guides. Now I want to discuss a little bit with you why would guides want to work with us? Because there's the false belief, and I know that this is a belief that's been handed down by my parents, that once you die, you need to be left to rest in peace and you shouldn't be disturbing the dead and all that sort of thing. As I said just earlier in this podcast, when I went to my first uh, medium healer, reader, whatever you want to call her, after I moved to the UK, the very first thing that my grandmother did was literally take over the stage. We didn't invite her, we didn't ask her to communicate with me, I didn't ask any of that. I went to see this lady for a completely different reason and here pops in my grandmother. And this actually got me into a lot of trouble with my mother because I shared that with her and she said this was evil and she even asked, she even sent a lady um, or tried to get me patched up with a lady who was going to maybe not exercise me but you know that kind of stupid thing and she wanted to put me right because I was in the wrong hands. And that was ridiculous as well. This lady that did the reading for me was um, an incredibly beautiful healer. I actually trained with her as a spiritual healer on the back of that session. So there's, if someone tells you that you shouldn't disturb the dead, they just don't know what they're talking about. They're probably coming from a religious background and it's not that I want to have a chip at religion, but um, religion has a lot of spiritual truth, but it also has a lot of human um, content in it that is meant to um, create a, like, um, social fabric so it's it wants people to behave a certain way and it has blinders religions have huge blinders there's also a level of religion not, i'm not going to talk too much about it that um some of the higher understanding of spiritual laws are kept for the close-knit community inside that religious like the monks and the nuns and the people who are more the mystics of that particular religion but the masses, the people who go to church or whatever, wherever temple, only get fragments because they're not considered wise enough to understand the bigger picture. So they're, I mean, it's a bit screwy, but I don't, I don't want to go into that. It's not the topic of this, but I guess that's why I want to say, uh, if someone tells you that you need to leave a dead to rest in peace, that's, that's not actually the truth. Um, if you've known about Abraham Hicks and their wonderful um, um, wise beings, a group of beings, um, they, they explain and very clearly, and they are these beings, that um, the spirit world is incredibly interested in what's happening on earth because that's where we're creating the leading edge of thinking. So this is why guides want to come and help us because sometimes as well, they have regrets over their past lives, the, the last lives that they've had, and they want to put it right. 
and we're going to come to this with my business guys because my main business guys has a lot of regrets <laughs> and he's come to me for a specific purpose to help me um, bring into the business world um, the divine feminine and some aspects that are clearly um, lacking and missing in the business world at this point. So they come to help continue progress life on earth and they can do that beautifully because they have uh, first a wealth of knowledge, they have access to universal consciousness and they also can see the bigger picture. Um, you know, they, they'll be able to see who your ideal client is. And that's something I've done in sessions. I've been able to tell people, thanks to my guides and their guides, this is the kind of client you should focus your attention on. And sometimes it was completely different from what the person was doing. So what kind of guides exist in the spirit world? I want to describe them a little bit as well. Um, I, I'm going to talk about six main guides, but I'm not going to go into the details because today's episode is about business guides okay it's not about the whole um, kit and caboodle but um you have healing guides protector guides protector guides are very important for people who work in healing capacities or in um, therapy or in one-to-one -one work with people because you tend to absorb people's energies especially if you're a natural healer and you're not aware that you're doing that there's writing guides, um, so if you're an author or a budding or an aspiring author, um, there might be actually um, a published author in the spirit world that will want to help you with your endeavors. Um, there's master guides, that are usually um, like one, especially if you have more than one guide, some people have a lot, um, some people only have one. It depends on uh, what you're supposed to um, accomplish. So the master guide is a bit like the, the CEO, like managing everybody else and uh, and um, bringing people in when, when needed because some guides are here with you for a season and some guides uh, are here for an entire life and some guides just come for one job. So it's a bit like friendships really. Um, there's all these uh, realms so there could be um, a guide that comes in at one point because you're doing a specific thing and they really want to help you with that but they won't necessarily stay with you and then some guides as I said will stay for a long time. I had a guide for a while that um, now has left who used to be a chiropractor and that was when I was doing uh, Reiki hands-on and so he was with me and I would do actually manipulation on people uh, with their um, permission I had to have a bit of a disclaimer because I'm not trained as a chiropractor but he loved to he used to love to do that uh, when I was doing Reiki sessions especially he couldn't help himself when I he saw that there was something that needed fixing and and so that's what happened um, but now that I don't do um, healing hands-on anymore he's gone um, to go and help someone else if that makes sense there's personal guides, um, so they could be, let's suppose, um, I'm going to say something because I know um, she's with me. Um, suppose you were doing home educating your children, which is what I do. Um, there could be someone like um, Maria Montessori who wants to work with you to help you with your home education. And I know that she's helping me with that. So I don't really have to go and uh, read books about education because I get the information straight on. And I don't get it like, um, well, it doesn't matter how I get it, but I don't get it like I see her and she walks side by side with me. That would completely spook me. I get it more because I'll suddenly have an idea. And that's, I think this is something that you need to hear today is that very often we get ideas that come out of the blue. And if that's the case, that's a sign that it might come from a guide and not from you, especially if it doesn't come as within a train of thoughts, if that makes any sense. Um, so, and then there's business guides, which is what we're going to focus on today, okay? Um, so, business guides would have been very successful business people, but not necessarily famous, okay? Because there's loads of business that have been created ever since um, people have decided to trade, almost, you know? when Even when money didn't exist, there were still very successful business people. Uh, very often I, I hear the story of John, um, of Aramitra, I don't, can't even pronounce his name, which was supposed to be um, Jesus' uncle in the times of, um, well, in, in the Bible times, and he traveled the world uh, trading tin. Uh, and yeah, he, he could be an incredibly successful uh, business guide for someone who was maybe in the trade industry, maybe in the travel where, where there's lots of shipping involved, that sort of thing. That's the, you get the idea. 
and their drive is to continue to impart wisdom from the other side they just want to be involved they just you know and people in the spirit world are very alive and they're very they keep their sense of humor as well that's what i love about them so how will they make themselves known to you because almost everyone has a guide everyone definitely has a guardian angel that's a separate subject but everyone has a guide well when you're ready to work with the guide you are going to start to see their names everywhere it's like um, maybe you'll see a documentary and then on the back of that uh, you will see a post on Facebook and then um, you will bump into a friend in on the high street wherever you are and they will talk to you about that person so these are like breadcrumbs that you need to follow and I want to talk a little bit about my main business guide and how this happened for me so this is the bit where I'm a little bit anxious about talking about him but that's fine because I know I have to uh, my main business guide is Steve Jobs and when he first um, asked to work with me um, I can't remember if it was three or four years ago I literally said to him go away <laughs> I didn't want to have anything to do with him first because I didn't like him as a person I had heard horror stories about his temper I'm not a big fan of technology honestly um, 